With WKUF News, I'm David Jackson for Monday, May 23rd, 2016. The community water resource site at the West Court Street Church of God will reopen today at noon. Amanda Emery of the Flint Journal reports that until then, residents are encouraged to visit nearby water resource sites, such as at the Easttown Bowling Alley on South Dort, just north of Atherton, or the Michigan Department of Human Services in the Ross Plaza at Pearson and Clio. Michigan State Police say that the site was closed in an abundance of caution for the safety of Flint residents and workers after Flint police confirmed that on Saturday shots were fired into a home in the area with no injuries reported. Flint City Hall is getting a free upgrade to their security system. Amanda Emery of the Flint Journal reports that Flint City Police Chief Tim Johnson went to the police foundation in his first month on the job and said that the city hall complex needed more security and because of the city's financial situation, he needed help making that happen. According to Gary Ridley of the Flint Journal, in December, a break-in occurred in an office containing documents related to the city's water system and the video surveillance on site was not able to assist in the investigation. Flint Public Relations Director Kristen Moore says that while the break-in is not the reason for Chief Johnson's request for an upgrade, Moore says that the police chief felt that steps should be taken to make the area more secure, noting that the police chief says that he is grateful for the donation. The new system, valued at $70,000, is being donated and installed by Sonitrol and 3X Logic and is scheduled to be installed this month. President Obama is in Vietnam today to discuss ways for the two countries to advance cooperation across a wide range of areas and to discuss the importance of approving the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The Associated Press reports that this morning, in an effort to encourage the leadership of Vietnam to cooperate, the president authorized the lifting of a ban on weapons sales to and the lifting of trade embargoes against the United States' former enemy. The president is pushing the country to sign on to the trade agreement, even as he is pressuring the communist leadership to provide the Vietnamese people with more freedoms. The communist country holds around 100 political prisoners, and the Defense Department still reports Vietnam as being responsible for 1,600 soldiers still missing and unaccounted for to this day. President Obama says that the U.S. and Vietnam have developed a level of trust and cooperation, adding that he expects deepened ties between the two nations' militaries. The Associated Press reports that outside of being a required signatory to authorize the multi-trillion dollar trade agreement, Vietnam brings nothing to the negotiating table, even going so far as to allege that they require the United States' assistance in addressing China's increasing presence in the South China Sea. In business news, German pharmaceutical giant Bayer AG disclosed this morning a $62 billion all-cash offer to purchase American farm chemical and genetically modified organism manufacturer Monsanto. Bloomberg reports that in a hostile takeover bid, Bayer AG is offering $122 per share, a 20% premium on Monsanto's last close in the U.S. The deal gives the German drug manufacturer a company that's both the world's largest seed supplier and pioneer of crop biotechnology. RT.com reports that in response to the bid, hundreds of simultaneous protests around the world were held to bring attention to a World Health Organization report that found a possible link alleging that Monsanto's weed killer Roundup causes cancer. According to Reuters, after the WHO report was released last March, Monsanto immediately demanded that the report be retracted, and apparently in response to the report, the WHO's International Agency for Research on Cancer, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization, the U.S. EPA, and the European Food Safety Authority all released reports saying that glyphosate, the chemical used in Roundup, probably doesn't cause cancer and is unlikely to pose a carcinogenic hazard to humans. Reuters reports that as of May 16th, the U.S. EPA is under investigation for withdrawing a report based on their own study into the chemical, and the European Union, who already has a ban on the herbicide, is set to meet later this week to decide whether to relicense glyphosate. This buyer AG bid to purchase Monsanto is the latest in a recent consolidation trend in the agribusiness sector, and if successful, would make the world's largest agriculture supplier. And finally, according to a study by researchers at McMaster University and the Hamilton Health Sciences in Canada, low-salt diets, as opposed to average diets, have been found to actually increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. The Canadian Broadcasting Company reports that the researchers studied 130,000 people from 49 countries and specifically looked into how the relationship between salt intake and cardiovascular events differed in people with high blood pressure as compared to people with normal blood pressure. 
What the study found was that regardless of blood pressure, greater number of major health concerns were tied with the lower salt diets. For more information about today's stories, visit WKUF.FM. I'm David Jackson.